In the video I made titled Music on the Altair, I demonstrated a low-cost and innovative music system made by Processor Technology, and I showed that system running on an Altair 8800 computer. And towards the end of that video, I promised I would make a follow-on video in which I showed this system running on the Altair 8800 clone computer. And that's what this video is about today. Now, if you haven't watched the original vid video, I'd recommend you go back and watch it. It'll fill in some of the blanks and details that I'll be glossing over in this video. All right, so one of the things that made the original music system so affordable was this simple board here. This was the hardware for the system. This actually is an S100 board. This does plug into the bus. This connects to ground in the bus connector, and this connects to the interrupt enable signal on the uh, S100 connector. Now, interrupt enable is a bus signal that can actually be controlled by software. And so the music system used this as a crude pulse width modulator, setting this line high and low to generate three-part music. Now that line ended up going through this resistor and capacitor, which formed a single pole low pass filter, and then it went through this DC block on the way to your audio amplifier. Now the obvious question is, with the Altair clone and not having an S100 bus, how can you possibly run this system on the clone? And the answer lies in the front panel. This indicator right here is the interrupt enable indicator. This is a duplicate copy of the interrupt enable signal on the bus. In the real Altair, it goes through a TTL gate and drives this light straight off of that bus. So we actually have a copy of the interrupt enable signal from the bus available on the front panel. And the Altair clone accurately duplicates the behavior of that interrupt enable light. So in the clone, we also have an electrical version of the interrupt enable signal of the bus up here on the front panel. So let me show you how I get to that with the Altair clone. Now if you recall the Altair clone is pretty darn empty on the inside and if you look at that little board right there that has all the parts of the um, S100 board I just showed you. There's one resistor and two capacitors. These are all the exact same value and wired up exactly the same as uh, on that board I just showed you. Now I included a little three and a half millimeter headphone jack so that I could plug in an audio cable that hooks over here to our Bose speaker. All right, and if you look closely, you'll see two wires running from that board to the Altair circuit board. The green wire is ground, just like the uh, board I showed you picked up. The blue wire is actually the interrupt enable signal coming off the front panel. So electrically, the wiring is identical to that board that we showed you for the S100. So let's see how it sounds. All right, so in this system, I have got the uh, cutter ROM ported to the Altair just like we did in the other video. And it's up at F1000. So let's go ahead and go to F1000, examine that address, and hit run. And that gets us running in the cutter ROM. That is a monitor ROM from Processor Technology. I'm going to go over to the computer screen now and show you that running. Now it's up at the top. What I'm going to do is hit return a bunch of times so that we can look at this down at the bottom where we can see it a little better. Okay, that greater than prompt is actually the prompt for the cutter ROM, the monitor ROM. And again, you can use it to dump, uh, let's see, it likes uppercase. Dump memory, let's dump the ROM, for example, F1000 to F0FF, here's the first 256 bytes. So it's your typical monitor ROM, you can execute from addresses. And this also allows you to load and save things to tape. And if you remember from the last video, I also added the ability to load and save through a serial port, and that's what we're going to do here. So we're in the cutter ROM. The first thing we're going to do is load the music program with an hget command through the second serial port. All right, and that's the music program coming in. All right, I'll execute from address zero, and that runs the music program. I'll do a new. That empties the buffer. If you look with a list command, there is nothing in there. The 8D3 to 8D3, that indicates that the buffer is empty. The start and finish locations are the same. So now we use the return command to return to the cutter monitor. And now we'll load the music. And we'll load the same one we showed in that other demo, which was Lay Down Sally. So I'll do a, a get from port 1 once again. We'll send Lay Down Sally once again, just like in the video on the real Altair. 
All right. Execute zero to go back into the program. It doesn't re give us the, 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 uh, the banner again. Type the file command to make it size the buffer. You can now see we have a buffer that starts and ends at a different place. Type the score command. That what compiles the music. Here's a listing of the music. We turn on the Bose speaker here and hit play. Watch the interrupt LED light, you can see it going with the music. You get the idea on that. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's play one more piece of music this time. We're back in the monitor. I'll do a new to clean it up. Go back to the uh, monitor ROM and let's load a classical piece of music from the Bach era. So we'll do an HGET port 1. and execute the music program, do a file command, do a score command to compile it. We'll take a quick look at the listing. This is Jesus, Jesus Joy of Man's Desiring from Bach, back in the old days. There's the source. All right, let me turn the music on, play it. This is a little more steady music, so the interrupt LED is not that uh, obvious on this piece of music. Alright, you'll get the idea on that. Uh, to be truthful, the tone of all that gets a bit annoying after a while, but in the day, that kind of three-part music was pretty amazing. Now, for you Altair clone owners, first of all, let me do the little spiel here. The computer used for the, dem the demonstration today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and feel of the original Altair, but it does it with modern hardware in the inside, so you don't have to worry about damaging or keeping a vintage computer up and running. And as you can see here, we can even run some old software that required hardware in order to run. This is a testament to the accuracy of the Altair's emulation and that that interrupt LED that we're pulling that signal off is so accurate that the frequency and tone of the music is actually exactly the same as we heard come off the original Altair. So this Altair clone is a great way to go if you want something to do besides uh, have to worry about keeping a real computer up and running. Now, for you clone owners, I will post something on the support site that shows you exactly how I made this board and how it hooked into the back. It's a very easy and rewarding project um, that will let you get a few extra miles out of your Altair clone.